Okay. So my name is Sandy Buckins. I live in Belgium, near to Brussels. Um, and I've done the whole, almost all of my career in procurement. I started in procurement with Procter & Gamble, went through Carrefour, where I bought yogurt and tiramisu. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Siemens, more technical wine. And since 2008, I'm, um, I'm an independent consultant in sourcing. Um, if you look at procurement, there are a lot of projects that need to be done in almost each company. So that's the advantage you have. Um, it's difficult not to score if you do a procurement uh, um, project. You can start at the beginning looking at the as this situation because most of the companies don't even know what they are it involves a lot of data crunching because you need to look into the systems mm -hmm. it needs a lot of thinking as well so it's not just figures mm -hmm. um, but you're trying to analyze where opportunities are mm -hmm. and by looking at the volumes and the number of suppliers and the number of purchasing orders and all that that um, you can help them a lot. Mm -hmm. So that on its own is already a project. Another thing that most departments are um, wondering about these days is their value add. Mm -hmm. Purchasing at the moment is still being seen as the one that negotiates price. <laughs> and most of the time people believe they do it too hard so the quality will go down. And that's not the evolution that we want the department to go. So um, the value add of the, of the department is something that almost every CPO um, is trying to find. And, um, I know one of the students in Belgium did a project on that last year, mm -hmm. and it was for uh, the Belgium Post. Oh, okay. So they have about 30, 40 buyers, and he had to work out a communication um, schedule. Mm -hmm. so, you can do data crunching on one side, you can do communication and marketing on the other side. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different projects you can do in, in procurement. We've had uh, several students at the moment. We've got one who is working in the retail mm -hmm. and they're looking at the possibility of installing a system to order better. Yeah. Uh, retail with the fresh fruit has to be order just in time and especially not too much because otherwise you have to throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> so they're looking at the system and looking at, in fact, the whole uh, variables that are into the process. There, there is another student, Charlotte, um, who at the moment is working at B Post again. Yeah. Um, and she is buying textiles. She's trying to get that uh, sourcing process in order. She's going to Paris to look at the fairs of fabrics. She's going to another fair, um, I don't know, in Germany somewhere uh, to look for shoes. Mm -hmm. um, because the Belgian Post has about 14,000 people. So it's a huge number and the clothing need to be dry for eight hours, even if it's pouring rain and it does rain in Belgium. It's corporate uniforms, but they're really made on the edge of technology. So she's helping them look for the best technology for these customers. I think the sky is, in the, is the limit in, in procurement. Um, it still needs a lot of development, the department. It's still young. And um, you don't get a lot of direction of your management. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these managers have not been taught into procurement. Um, so use a lot of common sense um, look in the direction that you want to work yeah is it more data engineering or is it communication or is it it and then you just go in with that flow and try and optimize what they buy if you go we've already spoken about the, of the data crunching and about the marketing if you go into IT, then it becomes more outsourcing mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. Outsourcing is important, especially with IT. It's not that easy for companies to do the step towards uh, outsourcing. A lot of CIOs 
want to outsource because it should be cheaper and better. However, ensuring that it is cheaper at the end and better, or at least the same level, is not that easy. Uh, managing people internally or managing a supplier is not the same. And everybody gets the suppliers that they deserve. So if you don't manage them, they will steal the cookies out of the cookie jar. Yes, you could take as a first job and say, I want to work on my weaknesses. And then you could do that. However, then you have to know that you're working on your weaknesses and your employee, uh, employer should know it as well. Um, so you, you can say that uh, there's one student now um, who has decided that his team skills are not that good. And he, he has said that in the interview, um, but he has chosen to go for consultancy. Now, if you're a consultant, your team skills have to be good. Yeah. So um, he knows he's starting with a challenge, but he really wanted to attack his weak point. You've, you've got to try and score as fast as possible, mm -hmm. not only for the company you're working for, but for yourself, for your own motivation. Mm -hmm. Once you have found something that you're good in and you have a value add for the company, they will trust you more and give you more freedom, and that will give you the possibility to grow in all directions. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, in fact, what I've been doing all my life. So. <laughs> Risk management is becoming very important. I think the outsourcing part, outsourcing part of IT has a part in that. Mm -hmm. um, risk management is also coming uh, or being something more important because we're working more globally. Mm -hmm. you, before, if you were buying everything in Belgium or in the UK, then mm -hmm. there's no issue with um, pounds or euros. So you don't have financial risks, you don't have political risks. Mm -hmm. If you're going to Asia or to even Greece now, <laughs> you might have a big problem. So if you're buying something with just a product and you're buying a shoe which will, which will be delivered and when it's delivered you pay it, there's not much of a risk. Mm -hmm. However, if you're buying service, then you have to ensure that your service will be continued mm -hmm. once you have signed the contract. So then these risk issues really become important. Another point is what they call CSR, uh, customer social responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so um, social responsibility is becoming, to me, still a marketing feature of all companies, but it's becoming really important. Mm -hmm. So people want to use, they want to be greener, they want to be, uh, Everybody is sticking now these stickers on their light uh, knobs saying uh, switch off the light when you're finished. Yeah. You've got your two buttons in the toilet, use the one that uses the most, uh, the less water. Yeah. So all these things are helping now. They're not making a huge difference. Um, everybody wants to use recycled paper. Um, however, not for their marketing stuff. Th that's the biggest issue in procurement. Everybody wants to have, and everybody's having all suppliers sign that they're not using child labor and they're having good con working conditions for their Chinese uh, friends. Mm -hmm. However, if you start negotiating the price and we're still here in business making money, then uh, if somebody is offering you 20% reduction, mm -hmm. then you're not going to not you look at them. So that's, that's a little bit, uh, that's why at the moment for me, from, from a procurement point of view, it's still a marketing feature. I think communication is the future. Communication is the future. Um, we're all working with people. The, the, the value add, everything is automated. Mm -hmm. And uh, as engineers know, the automation is very, very important. However, the difference between the companies is made through the people. Yeah. And if you cannot work together with all kinds of people, it will hold you down. Mm -hmm. It will hold you down in your evolution. It will hold you down in experiencing other things. Um, so to me, and this is what I'm teaching the students in Belgium and the people I'm coaching as well, um, Communication is the driving motor at the moment. What, what I see as well is that the students at this point, they're all, they're just saying what they think. Mm 
they're much more assertive than I was uh, when I graduated, which is good. Um, however, sometimes you have to realize that, especially if you're talking to a higher level, these people don't have to, times, uh, time to read your 20 emails because you changed your mind. So um, think, of the, think of the elevator pitch and uh, you only have so many stores going up talking to someone and you have to get this communication right. So you have to prepare yourself. You have to know what you're going to say, why you're going to use these words and um, when you're going to use them. It's important because if you start just with an introduction of 10 minutes and after 10 minutes he, he is lost you, then you haven't said anything. And he's moved on and you've lost your chance. Okay. And you cannot have, you cannot expect everybody to give you 20 chances. So think really well about what you want. Uh, try and formulate it in the right way to come to the point straight away, uh, but to put it in a, in a global picture and then go for it. Um, I like to see it uh, as a negotiation. You're negotiating for a job that you want. Of course, if you only have one option, it becomes more difficult because you cannot really choose. Yeah. However, do not try and oversell yourself. If you're overselling yourself, it will not work out at the end anyhow. So try and find out as much as you can about the culture, the company, the policies, the values, uh, their mission. Um, and once you have a good idea of that and the people working there, um, then you m might, by just being yourself, you'll be selling yourself better than just trying to sell yourself. Um, they don't want you to sell air because, I mean, there are the whole platform of the train is full with people which have the same degree. They want to have the person who makes the difference. And um, you have to look at your qualities and go by them. Another thing I, I believe is um, in the beginning when you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you always think like, well, he's perfect. Okay. When you go into your first job, you think like, wow, this I really would like to be. Now, after a while, you get to know your boy or girlfriend better and you realize that they're not that perfect. At that point, if you start thinking like, don't worry, I'll change them, I'll change them. This will not work. So if you have this feeling with a job interview, like this is something I really don't like, but don't worry, I'll change it. It's very, very hard to change a company culture. So, and the people that are interviewing are presenting their company. So they're the culture. Yes. So if you don't like it, be aware that you cannot change it. I think that's the most important. Look for a fit if this company is good for you. If, if this company is good for you, they might find you good for them as well.